sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear. Okay. I didn't hear you. Yeah. yeah, we got another thing coming. Well, sorry, can we start off? <laughs> All right, here we go. Welcome everyone to New York. Was born and raised here in New York. Um, Bronx, Manhattan, Brooklyn. We have a taste of everything here. A taste of different foods, a taste of different music, um, a taste of, of everything. From every country, you can find somebody here. Hey, beautiful. What's up? Yeah. Let me get some wine on Thursday. How's your day? Good. How about yours? It was good. A long day at work. I had to go sing at a church. Um, you ready for today? We got to go to Bay Plaza. Oh, yeah. We're yeah. going. We got to get the sneakers and the lock. You ready for school? What do you mean you're not ready for school? I thought you were excited about this. No. You're the not? way you describe it. No. It's just a little bit to scare you. It's gonna be fun. You're gonna like it. I mean, you put your mind to it. Right? By the way, this is my daughter, Aaliyah Torres. She drives me nuts, but she's the love of my life. My name is Fernando Torres. I'm from the Bronx. Um, I'm a singer, songwriter, worship leader. Um, of Dominican descent. I use my music as a tool to reach and spread my faith. Um, I'm part of an amazing ministry called Agnus Day Ministry. And that's exactly our job to, through our music, um, spread the gospel, spread the faith, and lead others into worship. So I was raised Catholic all my life, go to church every single Sunday. But um, like many of the youth, we just follow the faith through tradition, um, not that we really have a deeper understanding of it. I was blessed to be invited to a charismatic retreat when I was 13 years old. I had um, a supernatural encounter with God, and from there, I felt this strong calling towards music. God called me through the music. I was never a person who had any attraction to music, but through the music that was being played at the retreat, God pulled my ear that way. He pulled my ear that way, it's like, and I just felt compelled to want to do that. I want to lead worship, I want to sing. And it was to a point that um, I would sing in the retreat and, and people would just look at me like, bro, relax. Because <laughs> I had no musical talent. I had no musical gift. I did a retreat a couple months later um, at, my, at my own church. And the deacon, um, during the time of he ex that they exposed the Blessed Sacrament, uh, the deacon was asking the kids, the other youth that were there, um, ask the Lord for whatever you want right now. And the only thing I had in my heart was that I want to sing for God. I prayed in faith and I just said, you know, the Lord gave me this gift. A week later, I go to the youth group and the guy who was leading worship, he um, invited me over and he's like, you say that you, you can lead worship now, but let me hear you. And then I sang. And then he says, uh, nah, bro, you got to go take a seat. He says, no, go go take a seat. Thank you for trying, um, but this is not what God is calling you for. I didn't believe it. I said, no, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep going with this. Thank God. Like, of course, I had a little bit of discouragements um, throughout my life, but God had put other people in my life to tell me, no, keep going. You're gonna do it. Keep doing it. Keep, keep believing in yourself. Keep believing that God, this is what God called you for, this is what God wants from you. Keep believing in him. He's gonna give you the talents. 
there was other guys like me who felt the desire to do music. We bought instruments, we bought bass, we bought a guitar, we bought a cajon. And without knowing how to play, we taught ourselves. Somehow we learned, you know, we, we, we looked for stuff to do. We found books, we found videos, and we saw the other musicians who used to lead worship, and we used to see what they did. What, what chord is that? I don't know, but it sounds good. And we just started going from there, and we started learning more. I'm not an eloquent speaker. I'm not a great writer. I failed English class many times in high school. Um, I, I speak enough to get by. You know, but the Lord gave me those words in Spanish and in English to get to the people who need to hear these messages. Um, I really feel like it was God himself who put the words because on a, on a regular basis, I'm a blank. <laughs> but through prayer, you know, the Lord inspires, the Lord gives me, uh, would give me words to, to, to write. If I would have listened to that person who told me, no, you don't have anything, I would have just been sitting there not doing anything. You know, God had put people who, who didn't even let me quit. And they would put me in, in these public spaces and tell me, yo, sing to the youth group. And I'm like, I don't know if I should. And all right, no, do it, you got this, you got this. I would sing, and then I would have kids after the youth group telling me, bro, if you keep singing in the youth group, I'm not coming. <laughs> like, I'm not coming to youth group if you keep on singing. And um, unfortunately, they did leave. They <laughs> stopped coming to youth group, but, um, I would sing and I would feel the presence of God so greatly. It was, it was like I was in heaven praising God to the point that people started tolerating. People were okay with, with, with hearing my voice and then I would start hearing from other people like, wow, your heart, you're singing, touch my heart. You're singing, help me connect with God. Agnus Day started on December 12th. I was invited to sing at St. Patrick's Cathedral for Our Lady of, the feast day of Our Lady of Guadalupe. So I invited um, my friend Ronnie, Ronnie Felis. And he said yes, he came by and we sang, we, we rehearsed with our sister, Chris, a friend of ours, Christy. Um, we sang it and then from there, we kept on connecting. I believe that you're my healer. I believe he felt the, inspire, the inspiration to, to help me out with the songs that I've written, um, to record them. I had a problem, money issues, and he was like, don't worry about it, bro. We'll, we'll work on it, and we'll talk about money when we get there. I want your music to get released. We started doing other gigs together, started doing other events. Josh also, then Josh, who was Ronnie's cousin, came into the picture and God brought us together. We started doing more events constantly. It felt good, it felt like God was bringing that together. It was just friends doing, doing what we love to do. And we decided to call it a ministry and um, we were praying for a long time for a name and, and the name that came through our prayer was Agnus Day. And this is what, what we do. We, we lead worship through music and through the word. What attracted me to music was, was God. I fell in love with music because it brought me, it connected me with God. So music that secular is no, I feel like there's no spirit, there's no soul with it. So when I sing it, it just feels dry. There's nothing connected to it. And when I sing for the Lord, it just feels like I'm in heaven, praising and glorifying God. So I, can't, I wouldn't change that for the world. I wouldn't change that for anything. Our connection with the Blessed Mother, which is another song that we have, the Histe Que which means she said yes. Our praise and our worship that we do on a regular basis, that's what most of those songs are connected to. And that's what the, most of those songs, what the, that's the message that most of our songs have. Not only just doing it as a service, but just living a life of worship for the Lord, like just worshiping Him with our lives. I think that's the best I can get. <laughs> Our most popular song that we released as a band, which was also our first, was Dejame Entrar. It's a bachata song. Bachata is a Dominican genre. It's a genre from the country that 
most of the guys in the ministry are from. When we made the song, we were fortunate and blessed to have professional bachata musicians. They felt from their heart to put a part of them into the song. They felt like they were working for God by doing it. They didn't even charge. It was a blessing. We were actually um, at the studio and my head was breaking down because I, I can't work under pressure. So I'm like, what are we going to write? And Ronnie came up with the idea of the, of the chorus, which is, um, Dejame entrar en tus brazos, Señor, which means, um, let me walk into your arms, Lord. My life without you, only pain exists. I surrender at your feet. It was like, wow, this is deep. And the message for Prodigal Son came about with that. And I had to go home and, and, and write the verses. We need this quick. And in prayer, the Lord put the words in my, in my heart. I've always had a little bit of a struggle with writing a song. Um, it took me a little longer, but I, in prayer, I was asking the Lord, Lord, inspire. And this was one of the fastest songs that ever came to me. And um, the first and second verse came to me like water. We didn't sleep that night when we were recording it. You gotta get everything right. And it was all worth it. The story of the Hamantrad is that we fall away, we turn back, we put our, we turn our backs to God and we start looking elsewhere. And we always have to stumble and fall back to God. We bring out that message and there's a, and there's a song that it reminds us there's nothing better than being with God. Some of my favorite Spanish are, you know, like Jesus Edgar Romero, Marcos Wheat, Marco Barrientos, great musicians from, from Latin America, um, Christian singers, and I would listen to these songs on a daily basis. These would be the songs that I would sing a cappella at youth group. Then I got together with my with, with Ronnie, um, that we we like opened up as in like putting in um, incorporating the music that 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 is popular to the people. And, and the songs that, 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 that people like to hear on a regular basis to, to incorporate that into, their, into Christian music. Ronnie, Josh, and I, when we got together, it was like, we, we have to get to those people who haven't. So we had to find something uh, and, 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 and fish them in and reel them in with that. Our next song was No One Like You, which was our first English single. It says it in the title. It's, there's no one like God. This is what we believe in. We believe there's no one like God. It was not a regular song either. It was a funk. It was more of a funk, jazzy kind of song. We've come to lift our praise to you. Cause you're worthy. We've come to raise our praise to you. You deserve And in the song, we also speak about how he purchased us with his blood. Um, and it was a song about worshiping and glorifying God. And in every single one of our songs, we just incorporate what we believe in strongly. We incorporate our testimonies. We incorporate how we feel about the Lord. And we want others to also um, experience the same thing. When we lift our praise and our hands we raise, all our chains are broken and our shame erased. Fill us with your grace, I am yours, Lord. There's no one like you, no one like you. Most of our songs don't sound like the majority of the Christian songs. Uh, most of our songs is to catch the attention of the people who don't go to church on a regular basis. We want the people to bop to it. We want the people to, to bop their heads to it. We want the people to, to listen to them like, I like that beat. That beat sounds great. I like it. Subconsciously, we could get the message in their head and we plant the seed in their head. We've heard people like, this doesn't sound like a regular Christian song. This doesn't sound Christian at all when it comes to the beat. But when you sit down and listen to the message, the message hits the heart. We give you glory, Jesus, King of Kings. I honestly don't feel myself to be a great writer, or I struggle 
to get a song written down. And I feel like whenever I complete, when we, when we complete a song, it's God himself putting his hand in there. I'm not the greatest writer in English. I failed English class like about six times in high school. But so <laughs> I can speak it, you know, so you can understand me, but never was that good at it. So I was never a poet growing up neither. So the songs that I've written down and like, I feel like literally it's God that's putting those messages in my heart. Like right now, I have nothing. Nothing's gonna, I can't just sit down and write a song right now. I, it has to come throughout prayer um, and, and through inspiration from Him. Well, welcome everybody to my office. Um, this right here is the rectory of St. Teresa of Avila Church in Brooklyn. Um, this church is connected to the Co-Cathedral of St. Joseph, which is where I serve as a youth minister. It's a blessing to, to work with youth, to see when we can reach the kids and, and get the kids to, to, to follow Christ. I feel the Holy Spirit just completely moving, as in like, this is my purpose, and I feel no like I don't, I feel complete when I'm in that moment. Sorry, we're in, we're in Brooklyn. <laughs> but I, um, I, I feel complete and I feel uh, at my purpose when I'm leading people into worship, when I'm leading people into raising up their hands and connecting with God, um, when I'm leading people um, into that secret place. That's, that's where I feel like the Lord uses me as his instrument. And he completes and confirms it from time and time and time again. I've had many supernatural experiences where I'm just completely lost in love with God doing what I'm doing. And yeah, like there's no better connection when the Blessed Sacrament is present and you have other, and the other people are there worshiping God and you're able to lead the people into glorifying Him and placing all their attention on Him. So yeah, <laughs> I believe art is important, um, especially the musical art. Um, if we speak about um, the Levites, usually people refer to the Levites as the priests, right? It's only, only the priests, but the house of Aaron was the priests. But within the Levites were musicians who played for the Lord and also led for the battle and everything like that, right? And then you also have King David. Um, king David, before he was King David, Saul will call for him so he can play the music and play worship. And also, um, now another example will also be um, Bezalel. If it wasn't because God filled Bezalel with the Holy Spirit, through Bezalel, you know, they, they built the ark, the tabernacle, and that place of worship where God was. So it's very important for us to use what God blessed us with. God blessed us with, with, with these talents for, for the kingdom, for the glory of God. So.
So Love You is a song that was written by Ronnie Feliz. And it basically um, speaks about no matter where we've searched, no matter where we, um, no matter where we look, um, nothing has ever compared to the love that the Father gives us. Nothing compares to the love that God has given us. It's a song of love, but it's the way we sing it, it's like if we were a child. La love you, la love you. Can't nobody love me like you do. And it's also like, also telling him there's nobody who can love us the way he loves us. And it's a song of just full admiration, full affection, full, um, like a child's love back to God. We're singing back to him. La love you, la love you, la love you. Can't nobody love me like you do. Exciting thing to make us feel completed as a ministry is when you're leading worship at a retreat, at a concert, and you're able to get the people to worship. It just feel accomplished. You feel you feel complete. You feel like you're doing the job that God called like God called you to be. Our job is to get to people to worship God. Can't nobody, can't nobody, can't nobody love me like you do. Can't nobody. Many people don't see music or, or see musicians as as a vocation, but I can speak from experience that it's very important part to worship. God called me from a very young age for this. And he's came to confirm that, not that he needs me, but he wants me to be a part of that plan. As a musician, a worship leader, my hopes and dreams is to reach as many um, youth and young adult hearts as possible and go wherever the Lord pulls me to. Our mission statement is, is, uh, is that, um, as, as a bilingual worship ministry that um, leads people in English and Spanish, we want to reach as many youth and young adults as possible. While we're still young, while, we're, while we still can connect to these kids, we want to fish as many of them out of the sea as possible. And the next song that we're releasing is Vallenato, which is a very popular genre of Colombia. It's very well known in South America. And we have another song, which is, the R is an R&B song and is more, you know, urban to, to, to catch the young crowd um, in urban areas around the country. We don't stay in one place. We don't stay in one genre. We expand, catch every single ear so we can catch those hearts for Jesus. Christian musician, um, we go through a wide range of, of different struggles that can go from financial struggles, that can go from lack of pastoral support, you can go from not liking the genre of music that you're doing. What I've learned, you know, um, that keeps me going in this vocation is that the Lord makes it worthwhile. I can't explain, you know, how great it feels when you leave a retreat house and a, a, one of the youth come to you and tell you that they felt the Lord because of the music you were singing. And it helped them reach God. It helped them connect with God. The Lord uses us, you know, as his instruments and that we're a part of that puzzle piece. This is what keeps us connected. This is what, this is what keeps me personally still serving upon the struggles, upon things not being perfect. Um, is, you know, serving the Lord is, is better than anything else. of life? <laughs> Discover your true identity. Stay tuned to Shalom World.